Hey guys, Matt and JD here. This is from our Chess Goals Carol Khan course. We're looking at the Panov chapter. And I've been asked this question twice, JD. So one of the things we do with the Chess Goals courses is we kind of have lifetime updates, right? When viewers ask questions, we find new lines, we add bonus content. This comes out of the pseudo Panov attack where white starts with C4. And after taking twice, they don't have this D pawn up. And we recommend pawn to A6. Mm -hmm. If we go down this main line, we reach this end position. I'm just going to fast forward a bit. You can look at the course to understand these moves. But we reach this end position, and there's this idea for white where they can sacrifice the knight on f7 right here. So this is the move that I've been asked twice. Have you seen this before in the games, or has this been on your radar at all? It has, but in a different line. It's uh, in the two. There's a line in the two knights, which if you'll indulge me, if we go back to crank back and we get into a two knight situation, uh, we'll just give d4, we'll transpose, and, uh, sorry, not, that's not the two knights. Knight c3. Two knights. <laughs> knight c3. And then here, 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 when we play uh, knight out c4, we get this queen maneuver. And <clears throat> after we take, and they take, and we play here, and they play bishop c4, and we give this check here, and uh, we block with e6. And then the queen drops back, and we get the similar. You can already see the piece configuration is almost identical. And uh, so we're going to play. Uh, if we play b5 here, they drop back, play bishop to b6. And this is what's kind of important. Or sorry, not b6, but we have to play this queen maneuver first. And if they just castle, and uh, we somewhat lazily play bishop to b7, this, this becomes on the cards again. And which is one of the reasons why we had to play this queen c7 earlier this move order is important because this idea does exist in other openings uh but it ex also exists you know of course in in this line so uh after knight to d7 it's the same you know we have a very really similar we have a major piece barreling down the e-file you have bishop with a knight here so i think the same idea does exist in a couple of different paracon lines so it's an idea you should be aware of yeah that's a really good point i like that you show the other kind of similar lines because a lot of these themes are consistent across lines in the course. After knight takes f7, we have to take. Bishop takes e6. This pins the rook to the king. Now, this is one where I let Stockfish churn on this for like depth 50 or something insane, just to make <laughs> sure all the tactics are checked. And the move that I like the best is knight to f8. And as you start to look deeper at this move, it's actually pretty simple. There's two options for white. You either take or you retreat. And both of them, we seem to be getting comfortable advantage. Yeah, I think the the one of the main ideas between dropping the knight back is one, it is going to help defend. It's going to come out to g6 and defend against some of these attacking maneuvers that are going to come out. But it also gives us a greater control over the d5 square, which is going to be important because white is almost certainly going to get rid of their own light square bishop. And us being able to have some tactics down the d down the uh, this diagonal is quite quite important. So if, let's say, bishop to b3 was played, it was a very simple bishop to d5, just kind of blocking the diagonal. So white's going to take. King takes back. Now, I think most players are going to throw this queen check in. It's very aggressive. It's not a bad move. And here we can simply put the king back on g8. And this is where the fun starts, JD. We're looking at an advantage for black, according to the engine, half pawn. But if you count the material, white's up one point, right? Yeah, and it's not exactly clear why. So we came up with a cool idea to try to demonstrate why this position is so strong. And uh, I'm going to get to play with the engine, and Matt is going to just try to play as white. And we're going to demonstrate how uh, how terrible this position is and how a, a national master is almost certainly going to fumble it. Yeah, so I'm going to beat JD and Stockfish since I'm up one point of material. All right, yeah. JD, my move is bishop to f4. Get my last piece out. And you're underdeveloped. Okay, that's true. I am underdeveloped. Well, uh, I want to bring my rook across. And so I'm just going to bring the queen out to d7. Okay, so now what I would like to do, I have an extra rook, and there's one open file. It's the e file. I would love to just double rooks. So I'm going to start with rook to e3. Okay, I see that you want to bring your rook across, but I, I think I can take advantage of that. I'm just going to play knight to g6. I'm going to hit your bishop, and your bishop doesn't have anywhere great to go. You And your attack's going to fizzle as soon as you run out of pieces, so I'm going to try to take one of them. I don't think you're allowed to say just 
I'm just going to play this when you have a silicone monster in your corner. But anyways, I see a tactical error here that I'm not going to play. Bishop to g5 <laughs> could potentially fall into queen d5, queen takes g2, mate with the bishop double attack. Not going for that stuff. I'm going to drop back to g3. Aha, your whole queen h3 plan has been foiled. Uh, okay, so I think the most natural move for me here, which is not the engine best, is I'm just going to play rook to c8. Yeah, so this is your first mistake. Um, not going with the stockfish choices, you're going to regret that. Let's double on the e file. No problem. I'm just going to drop bishop back, and uh, I've got these squares really, really covered. You can come into e6 if you want, but I don't know what you're going to do there, because I'm going to kick you right back out. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so one thing I'm thinking is, you know, the queen has kind of served her purpose over here. I don't have a rook h3. Um, let's put the queen back on d1, trying to help out on the queen side. All right. Uh, I'm going to put my bishop on this beautiful d5 square. I'm taking away this. Uh, I'm also touching this pawn on a7, which is you're going to have to tie down a piece with it because you really don't have any way to defend it. You can't just move it forward because my other bishop will take it. You can move forward again. I'll just I can just grab it. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a huge fan of you touching my pawns. So I'm gonna put my queen on d2, defending. And uh, now my knight's really kind of done what it's gonna do. So I think I'm gonna go put it on f5. This is my idea. I actually it like triggers me that you tell me the plan. <laughs> I can't figure out what to do. Okay, so knight f5 <laughs> coming. Knight f5 was my, I don't know that the, that's what the engine's idea is. That was my thinking. I, I saw the engine recommended knight e7, and I just concluded what I thought the point was. Yeah, so I'm going to put my bishop on e5 since your knight's not on g6 anymore. All right, I'm still going to go to f5. That's still a really nice square, and I'm breaking up your discoordination here. You're going to have uh, trouble keeping your rooks doubled on the file now. And I still remember we talked about this knight on h4 in combination with the bishop on d5 in a video recently. Maybe that's an idea I'm going to go for. I'm going rook h3. He's back on h3. Uh, okay. All right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not terrified. I'm just going to play queen to f7 and ask you again, what are you going to do about this pawn? Um, okay. Yeah, that's a little annoying. Cannot push it safely. I don't think a4 makes any sense with the sacrifice. So I think I almost have to play this e1 rook. Ah, oh, but rook e2 runs into bishop c4. It certainly oh. does. Sir. I got to go very passive here. Rook a1. I don't think I can afford to lose that a pawn because then you have a passed a pawn. All right. Um, let's see here. I think... Yeah, I'll just play a5, maybe I'll play b4, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get active here. All right, let me think. Um, oh, I really want to play aggressive. See, I know you have Stockfish in your corner, but I'm just going to play what I would consider playing in a game. Are yeah, you going g4? g4. I'm going to do it. it I can't fear the engine. You're going to love this. You're going to love this so, so much. Remember, I, we said that with this bishop on d5, this diagonal is super Are you still going to go knight h4? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> and what are you going to do? Okay, if you, you can't allow queen f3, and you certainly can't allow knight f3. Go queen e3. Ooh. Okay, I'll play knight f3 anyway. That's fine. I got some wicked discovery ideas. All right. Yeah, I'm not walking into that. beautiful that knight is. And, and I'm cutting your rook off in the game. This is awesome. I don't mm. actually have to care about anything. Uh, let's go b4 and try to give, uh, try to open up, open up uh, the b5 square or b4 square for my own. Uh... Okay, turn your engine off. I don't need to turn my engine off. I actually didn't have to see the engine because you just hung the queen. <laughs> I was trying to make you, you on h7. Play. I was trying to make you on h7. <laughs> But just take, you take, you take. This is more fun. No. Okay. All right, my turn? Yeah, yeah, your turn. Oh, man, this is so bad, though. Okay, let me... Tr How do I get out of this? Let me try rook c1. I opened the a file, and now I'm going to get this guy. Okay, all right, I'll just take. Queen takes. And... 
Hmm. I'll give it a check. We've gone like 12 moves, JD, and you're having trouble beating me. I really don't think I'm having trouble beating you. Cause... You want to go back to D5? No, 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 no. I do kind of want to go back to D5, but uh, let's do it this way instead. Oh, okay. And now, now we'll go Bishop D5. All right, fine. I'll take the pawn. Now that your rook can't <laughs> come help at all, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna make a queen. All right, go ahead. Uh, H6. <laughs> it's always worth a try. I'm coming for you. G5. All right. Oh, you're gonna like this. I touch your rook. I ignore and you. Make a queen. I ignore that. Okay. All right. Uh, how about how about we trade queens? Or you give me your pawn with check. You pick. Yeah, I guess I have to take. Okay. Take. I love this. All right. I'm not even. We are not. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'll that's. Even, I'm even gonna sack my bishop. Notice how my bishop's covering b4. That's painful. I resign. <laughs> So, I mean, okay, so what can we learn about this, though? Because, I mean, Grand, you were playing relatively quickly, but you were trying to play natural, normal moves, and it seemed like that the main problem you were having was you had no attack, and your A-pawn was weak. And I was just going to, I always had this plan of winning the A-pawn and then just queening a pawn. That seems like that what uh, this whole Stockfish, uh, why Stockfish likes this position so much for Black is it just seems to think that if you plant a bishop on d5, and this pawn is just in huge trouble. These two pawns are just incredibly weak. You get tremendous play with no real attack from white. And I think if you were to look at just like the best moves according to Stockfish, I think it likes a plan where you try to just position your pieces to play defensively um, and try not to have any weaknesses from the white side. Because these newer versions of Stockfish, they can look so deep positionally they can feel that position coming where black has full control and a plan and white's just sitting around waiting. Yeah, I, I agree, but I, I do think that this would be, you, you think you're probably better as white, I think, if you go for this. You, you're up material. Yeah. Our, king look, our pieces look maybe a bit awkward, but the, the board's wide open and we have the bishop pair. And yeah, I think that uh, I think this is a really instructive way to look at this and to let you know not not to be afraid. And I think the key move you got to remember is this knight f8. I think that's just a really key idea here. And once white makes a move, are we in the clear then? Like, let's say bishop to f4 is played. Are we in the clear from this sacrifice uh, happening? Sure, we can just grab the knight if we want. But okay, let's say can we get away with not grabbing the knight? Say we play knight f6, which feels pretty natural. I don't think the sacrifice is so great anymore. Right. And Bishop D5 now. Yeah, Bishop D5. We don't even get the king coming out. You've got to come here. And we have kind of an improved version of what just happened. Because you didn't get any tempi with your queen. And our knight is nicely positioned on F6 instead of F8. So yep. I think we have everything we had before and, and some. All right, so this was good, JD. This was something that's been asked twice. Now the viewers have their question answered. I'm going to put a link to this in our Chess Goals Carol Con course. And check out the link in the description, guys. You can try out the courses for free. And if you purchase a course and you don't like it, there is a money-back guarantee as well. You like You're the Carol Con course, JD? I do. So like, I like the Carol Con course so much that instead of taking the money-back guarantee, I, I paid you extra after the fact. I appreciate that. Yes. That's not true. You gave me the coin for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.